Welcome to part two of What Happened to Data East, a defunct video game company from the 80s and 90s. You spoke and I listened, so this video includes the lawsuit between Capcom and Data East. I'll also be covering some additional games that Data East created for the Neo Geo MVS Arcade. If you're new here, I'm Rodney with Zavivi Entertainment. You're always welcome here, so make sure to click the subscribe button and let's get started. You might remember from part one that Data East was involved in numerous lawsuits. The first was when they sued Technos Japan over a stolen game called Pro Tennis, which was settled out of courts in 1983. In 1988, another lawsuit occurred. They would sue Epix over their game World Karate Championship for the similarities with Data East's game Karate Champ, a lawsuit they would not win. If you haven't watched part one, I highly suggest it to get a more in-depth look at Data East and those two lawsuits. In 1993, Data East would release an arcade fighting game called Fighter's History. The game would become famous due to the lawsuit filed by Capcom USA against the Data East Corporation, claiming copyright infringement over their game Street Fighter 2. Capcom would also file the claim against Data East in Japan. Data East had already dealt with their own copyright lawsuit over their game Karate Champ, a lawsuit that was lost in the end. However, they would use this experience and knowledge in the Fighters History lawsuit by claiming in court that their game Karate Champ was the true originator of the competitive fighting game genre, which predated Capcom's original Street Fighter game by three years. While Capcom was able to show the design documents for Fighters History made numerous references to Street Fighter 2, and while the judge agreed that there was strong evidence that the game had set out to copy Street Fighter's success, the case would rule in favor of Data East due to Scenes of Fair, which are excluded from copyright laws. Scenes of Fair basically states that every genre will have similarities and you can't copyright standard ideas on a first come first serve basis or you would hinder the expression of future ideas. I used the baseball example in part one and it works here too because the first company to create a baseball video game could not copyright the ideas in the game that relate strictly to baseball because another baseball game could never be created and that's what scenes of fair protect against. Comment below your thoughts on the Fighters History lawsuit by Capcom. Have you played both and how similar do you think they are? In my opinion, I think it's clear they copied Street Fighter, but I also believe since they went through their own copyright lawsuit, they were ready for any copyright infringement claims that would come against Fighters History. In the end, it proved they were ready because they won, and the win was huge for all video game companies, and even for Capcom who lost the lawsuit. Winning a copyright lawsuit against ideas that are similar in video games would have destroyed the industry. In 1994, after the lawsuit, Fighter's History was ported to the Super Nintendo, where it was met with mostly negative reviews. Electronic Gaming Monthly would give it mixed reviews with one reviewer saying, Unlike many fighting games that come out, FH has exceptional control. However, that reviewer did criticize the game's graphics and sound. Nintendo Power would criticize the sound in the game and lack of originality. And GamePro would call the game an unremarkable Street Fighter knockoff with solid but slow gameplay. Fighters History would receive a sequel in 1994 called Fighters History Dynamite, aka Karnov's Revenge, a name taken from their 1987 arcade game called Karnov. It was released for the Neo Geo MVS or Multi Video System, a coin operated arcade machine that would support up to six different cartridges in a single cabinet. It was also met with mediocre reviews, with GamePro stating it was a modest improvement over the first game and the new characters were better than the old ones. Fighters History would receive a second sequel in 1995, a Super Famicom game only released in Japan called Fighters History Mizoguchi Kiki Apatsu. 
The final boss of the game would be none other than Atomic Runner Chelnov, which was another Data East arcade game that released in 1988. From 1993 to 1995, they would release multiple arcade games for the arcade machine Neo Geo MVS. Starting in 1993, they would release their first Neo Geo arcade game called Spin Master. The character designs for the game are almost identical to the ones from the Sega Genesis game Dashing Desperados. In the game, the player can use the pre-equipped yo-yo to defeat enemies while searching for treasure chests with better weapons. The player can also use a slide attack and a special attack that kills all lesser enemies on the screen while significantly damaging the bosses. In 1994, they would release multiple games for the Neo Geo Arcade. The first was Karnov's Revenge, a sequel to Fighter's History. The second was Street Slam, a basketball game that featured three-on-three -three matches. In the US version, the player could select teams from a selection of 10 different cities in the United States. And in the Japanese version, the cities are replaced by countries. It would receive a sequel known as Dunk Dream 95 in Japan and would be called Hoops 96 in Europe. The last game released in 1994 was Windjammers, a fast-paced sports arcade game. The game is very similar to Pong and Air Hockey, where the player constantly throws a disc at the goal of their opponent. The game has grown in popularity over the years and in 2018 appeared at the Evolution Championship Series Annual Fighting Game Tournament in Las Vegas. A sequel is currently in the works for the Nintendo Switch and PC with a release date of 2019. In 1995, they would release a puzzle game called Magic Drop, also known in North America as Chain Reaction. In the game, the player can take bubbles from the stack and rearrange them to form chain reactions. The game would spawn multiple sequels and the last game from the series that was released in the United States was Magical Drop Pocket for the Neo Geo Pocket Color and Game Boy Color. In the end, G-Mode, the company that bought most of Data East's video game library and company trademark, would also acquire their Neo Geo games. Again, if you haven't watched part one of what happened to Data East, I highly recommend it. Data East has a very long history and honestly with all the great games they developed, it's really sad they didn't make it in the end. As always, don't forget to subscribe because it really helps my channel grow. Click the notification bell to keep up to date on my latest videos. Click the thumbs up if you enjoyed watching this. Thanks to all my current subscribers. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.